friends, welcome back to Faith and Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and we're in the kitchen today doing a really fun project. If you don't know, I have completely cut seed oils out of my diet. The only place that I still consume seed oils is in my Burt's Bees chapstick because I'm addicted and I can't give it up. But from a food standpoint, I've given it up completely and that means that I have cut out all of those sugary seed oil laden breakfast cereals that we know and love. I love cereal and I miss it so much. I'm good, I don't eat it, but I miss it. And so I was on Pinterest just casually scrolling the other day and re uh, breakfast cereal recipes were popping up and I thought, oh my gosh, how fun. So today we are going to try to make homemade from scratch Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Peanut Butter Captain Crunch cereal. I'm so excited. I just picked up milk on Tuesday. Today's Thursday, so I have fresh cow's milk in the fridge, and we're gonna try to make some cereal and have a bowl of cereal. So fingers crossed that this turns out successful. I was reading the comments on both recipes, and it was kind of 50-50. Some people were like, this is good for snacking, but not for a bowl of cereal, and then other people were saying that they were enjoying it as cereal, so We'll see. We're gonna start with the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. This is also Tom's favorite cereal and he doesn't know that we're doing this today. So I really hope it turns out so that he can enjoy a bowl of Cinnamon Toast Crunch because I have not, he's not had cereal either. I've not been purchasing it. So this one's a little, gonna be a little difficult. Sorry, I'm still congested from having COVID. Um, this one's gonna be kind of hard for me because I do not have a food processor. All I have is my Ninja Smoothie Blender and I'm gonna use it and hope for the best. So what we have here, two sticks or one cup of cold butter cubed, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this in here. I'm gonna kind of alternate it because of what I'm working with. Here I have a cup and a fourth whole wheat flour. I used a combination of hard white wheat and spelt um, and freshly milled it. You can just use all all-purpose flour if you want to. I'm gonna pour some of this flour in here, not all of it, and I'll put a little bit more butter. If you have a food processor, you could just go ahead and throw in all of the ingredients, but I'm gonna alternate it in hopes that this works for me. I'm gonna go ahead at this point and sprinkle in half a teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to sprinkle in half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I have one of the two sticks of butter in here, so I'm gonna stop here again because of what I'm using and I'm just gonna give this a couple of pulses to start combining it. All right, so I figured out immediately that that was not going to work with my smoothie maker. Man, I really need a food processor. I've got to get a food processor. All right, so what I'm gonna do instead because fact of the matter is I do not have a food processor. And just to recap, I have a bowl here. I have one and a fourth cup of whole wheat flour, freshly milled, spelt, and hard white wheat combo, although you can just use all all-purpose flour. I've got two sticks or one cup of butter in here, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That's what I've added so far. I've got my pastry cutter here. I'm going to start to cut my butter in here, but I think I may have already screwed it up because when I put it in the food processor, it made it almost like a, like a whipped butter consistency, but we're gonna keep going. I'm also going to add one and a fourth cup of all-purpose flour. But like I said, you could just use all all-purpose flour and then that would be two and a half cups altogether. And I'm just going to start cutting this in here. And it's almost like we're making pie crust and you want this to clump together into small little pea-sized bits. Which actually this is starting to look Good, so I don't think that this is gonna be a total loss. That's good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw an apron on today because I have a feeling this is gonna get messy. Shout out to my best friend Heidi for getting me this apron for my birthday. I believe, if I remember correctly, it is handmade from Guatemala and it is a beautiful addition to my apron collection. Thank you, Heidi. Next, I'm going to add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, roughly. and then half a cup of cold water, just a little at a time. Now, because my butter, I screwed that up using my smoothie maker and my butter ended up getting kind of, it's not cold anymore. I put an ice cube in my water to make it really cold to help this get cold again. 
So I'm going to fish that out. So I have half a cup of cold water here and we're going to drizzle it in a little bit at a time until the dough comes together to form a ball. And if you were using a food processor, um, you would just drizzle the water in as it is doing its food processor thing. Even though this is a huge pain in my butt, it's actually coming together pretty nicely and I'm definitely starting to like see how this could work for making the cereal. So I haven't added all of the water, but I'm actually really liking the dough and I don't wanna add any more water right at this moment because I think it would make it too sticky because I know we have to roll this out. So I'm gonna stop here and then the next step is to go ahead and get it rolled out on a floured surface. But because this got warmed up so much, I think I'm going to stick it into the fridge for probably like 15 minutes and let it cool back down. Because I know that if I tried to roll this out right now, it would be a sticky, sticky mess. So I'm going to let this cool back down in the fridge for a little bit. While we have the Cinnamon Toast Crunch Dough chilling in the fridge, I do want to go ahead and start working on the Peanut Butter Captain Crunch Dough. So for this one, I've got a, another bowl, a new bowl here. I'm, we have two cups of flour, and I'm going to do one cup of all-purpose flour and one cup of freshly milled flour. And here I have a freshly milled spelt flour. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And I'll get one cup of all-purpose here. Now, I really wanted to make sure that I included whole grains in these recipes because although it's not quite the same, cereals also boast the use of whole grains. And I do think that you can feel that when you are eating the cereal, especially with the Captain Crunch. It definitely has a whole wheat vibe to it, I feel like personally. And so I think by using whole grains here, it will really help make it as much like the store-bought version as possible, I think. I have a little spider friend right here hanging out with me. Very active, it's like climbing up and down its little web. I have spiders in the kitchen like crazy and I don't know exactly why. Tom's always trying to kill them and I never let him. I'm like, leave my little spider friends alone. You're never even in here. They're not bothering you. Do not kill my friends. <laughs> Next, we're gonna add one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna get that kind of roughly mixed together here. So I think for both of these, the oven needs to be preheated to 350. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get it preheated because I don't think that the peanut butter Captain Crunch is gonna take me long to put together. Next, we need one cup of creamy peanut butter, and I think that's exactly what I have here. So I'm just gonna add in the rest of this jar. We're gonna add another two teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, <laughs> I'm having a dilemma. This recipe calls for one cup of maple syrup, which is a lot of maple syrup. I purchased my maple syrup from a local, um, I don't know, what is a place called that produces maple syrup? A local farm that farms maple syrup. Um, and it's really good quality stuff, expensive. A cup is a lot. I have this, I have had this in the fridge for a very long time and I keep putting off using it because it's the fake stuff. This is not even, it literally doesn't even contain any maple syrup. It's corn syrup, water, sugar, and I was gonna, when I saw corn syrup, water, sugar, I was like, yeah, okay, I'll use it. But then I kept, it has caramel color. And if you saw my video where I talked about harmful, hard to pronounce food items, caramel color is like really, really, really bad for you. So I don't think I can bring myself to do it. I don't even want this in my fridge anymore. I don't want to throw it away, but I also don't want to give it to anybody because it's so bad. What do I do? You guys tell me down in the comments, what would you do here? Is it wasteful for me to throw this away? Should I try to give it to somebody? We have lots of homeless people. Should I just give this to a homeless person? I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> you guys tell me down in the comments. All right, I'm biting the bullet and I'm using my fancy maple syrup. 
really hope that this turns out good. Even if they're not good as cereal, even if it's just good to snack on, I'd be okay with that. I just don't want this to go to waste. Because that is a lot of maple syrup. Let's make sure I get every drop of this in here. So I haven't tasted this maple syrup yet. Let's taste it. Oh, I'm really excited. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my God. That's the best maple syrup I've ever tasted. Oh my gosh, I could drink that. Wow, that's good. Okay, and then lastly, a fourth a cup of oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. Um, it even says olive oil as an option. I'm going to use coconut oil. I really like baking with coconut oil. I'm just gonna stick this in the microwave really quick. All right, now I think, I was thinking when I was at the microwave, I'm gonna use this guy to mix it all together because I imagine this is gonna be super sticky. So let's get this mixed together here. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, this is extremely wet dough. Um, and they're, the ingredients are not in weight, they're in cups. And so I'm almost wondering if this needs a little bit more flour because it says two cups. It says two cups of flour. It says two cups gluten-free flour, spelt flour, or all-purpose flour. But two cups of freshly milled spelt flour is not going to give you the same weight as two cups of all-purpose flour. And this is really, like, this is really wet. So I'm, I think I'm gonna add just a touch more. I'll just do all-purpose just to make it easy. I'm just gonna add like another, let's start there. That was like not quite a fourth a cup. Okay, now comes the fun part. So let me see, what do I wanna use here? The recipe says to use half a teaspoon amount. See, this is, see, okay, I think I'm gonna add more flour because I've gotta be able to roll these into balls and there's, it's absolutely has no form as a dough whatsoever. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. I don't wanna add too much flour because I think it's gonna make it really dense. And I want the cereal, the cereal, I haven't had it in a long time. If I remember correctly, it's very like, light and airy and crunches easily. And I think if I add too much flour, it's gonna give me a very dense ball. And so I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna pipe it out onto my baking sheet. So I'm just gonna use a plastic bag here and put in some of my batter. It smells delicious, and I may or may not have licked my finger earlier, and it tastes so good, oh my gosh. So even if it doesn't hold up in milk, it's still going to taste so good as a snack. All right, and then, where are my scissors? I'm just going to snip off a little bit because I don't want these to come out big. I want them to come out pretty small. And I think I'm just gonna go through and pipe. Now, I was reading the comments on this recipe and people were saying that they were um, getting bigger as they baked, like they were puffing up. So I don't want to make these too big. So I'm interested to see what these end up coming out looking like because the recipe tells you to roll them out into little balls and these are really roughly shaped because of the way I'm doing it. But I almost feel like these are going to be lighter and less dense than if I had rolled them into balls, so I'm excited about this. I'm just really curious to see what these come out looking like. This is definitely not something that's going to, even if they turn out amazing, it's not gonna be added to the normal rotation because in order for me to make enough of these, <laughs> to have a bowl of cereal. I'm gonna be standing here forever. But I do think that this is just a fun little treat to do sometimes, if these turn out. 
Okay, so here's the first batch. Here's the thing. I have enough batter to do this probably four to five more times. So this is a labor of love. This is not something we're doing on the reg, but I'm excited to see how this turns out. So I'm gonna put these in the oven, my preheated 350 degree oven. The recipe says for 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna check them at eight, but I don't want, this is not something that I'm gonna take out early like I do with like cookies because I want these to be crunchy. Okay, this is actually pretty fun. I'm excited. They are not as crispy and crunchy as like Captain Crunch from the store. But they're still pretty crunchy. Did you hear that? That's pretty crunchy. Um, they taste amazing. Do they taste just like Captain Crunch from the store? No. I'd say they're in the family though. They're pretty close. They're delicious. They taste so good. Um, I have to go bring Tom his lunch right now, but I think I'll wait until the end. We will try both of these cereals in milk to see how they hold up. I did, I think they were in there for a, about eight minutes. Um, and I took them out because they were starting to get very brown. And a couple of these are very brown and they taste like they're on their way to being burnt. So I couldn't leave them any longer. This is fun. I'm really excited about this. So my batter sat out while I was bringing Tom his lunch. And when I got back, I went ahead and um, started pushing out more of the uh, peanut butter Captain Crunch balls. And then I went to refill this. And when I lifted up the spoon, I realized my batter had like really stiffened up. I think what happened was I unintentionally did almost like an auto lease where the um, whole wheat flour was able to absorb some of that liquid and my dough stiff my batter stiffened up really nicely. So I was able to actually roll some of these into balls. So I'm excited to see how those turn out. But honestly, I'm not terribly concerned about the shape of these. When you make homemade products, you really have to let some of that go. It's not, they're not gonna be perfectly round little balls like the store-bought version because the store-bought version uses machinery in a factory to achieve those perfect consistent little balls. I don't care about that. If they're misshapen, I'm completely okay with that. So I'm just, as the rest of this video progresses, I'm gonna be going through batches of these because I still have so much batter left. This is my fourth, yeah, my fourth batch going in the oven. I'm gonna end up with hundreds of these little things, which I guess is the point, right? So that's good. I wanna go ahead and move on to the Cinnamon Toast Crunch because that batter has been in the fridge now for some time. I may find um, a similar thing that the whole wheat flour absorbed some of the liquid and I did not use the entire half a cup of water. So I may end up needing to add some water to this to get it to be See how crumbly it is. I may need to add some water, but right now I'm gonna try to go ahead and form this into a ball and just see what happens. Of course, same with pie crust. You don't wanna handle it too much because you want it to keep cold, but I'm going to just kind of try here and see what happens. So far so good actually. Nope, I think we're good. I do not think we need to add any water. So I'm, I ended up with um, five different little balls here. So I'm going to work with one at a time and keep the rest of this in the fridge when I'm not actively working with it. It is absolutely ridiculous how delicious these little peanut butter Captain Crunch balls are. They are so good. All right, I'm gonna lightly flour my work surface here. Now the trick here is to roll this out really, really, really thin. Like, I'm pretty sure the recipe says um, the thickness of a quarter. I can definitely see that that's going to be the struggle with this recipe. It's going to be getting this thin enough that it ends up being the consistency that we want it to be after being baked. I can see how that would be an issue. I would say that is close to being 
the thickness of a quarter. I don't want to go much thinner because it's starting to stick really bad. Yeah, I'm going to call it. All right, now I have some melted butter that I am going to spread on top of my dough here. Okay, next I have half a cup of granulated sugar mixed with one tablespoon of cinnamon, and I'm going to sprinkle that on here. The recipe says to press it into the dough, but I really don't want to get that on my hands. So I'm just going to take the rolling pin, and I think that essentially accomplishes that. Then, I'm going to use my pizza cutter. Time to load these up. So the bottom of them has quite a bit of flour, unfortunately. So for the next batch, I'll have to make sure that I'm careful not to flour my work surface too much. But I think these look really good and I think they're gonna taste good and I love the thickness that I ended up with. I think that these are going to be awesome. The cinnamon toast crunch recipe is not it. It's not happening. Let me show you how these turned out. I kind of didn't have high hopes for this one based on the comments. They are like little puff pastries. They are, even with me rolling it out as thinly as I literally physically could, they are very thick. And these have been put, so I did the initial, like what did I, I think I did like 12 minutes. I brought them out, I flipped them over, and I put them back in. I actually even upped the oven temperature to 375. I put them back in for like another five-ish minutes, maybe a little more. So like here's a thin one, for example. It's like puff pastry. There's no crunch at all. No crunch at all. The flavor's okay, but it really does just taste like I'm eating a pie crust. It does not taste anything like cinnamon toast crunch and it's not pleasant enough for me to be like oh yeah this is a great snack not doing anything for me at all so the cinnamon toast crunch I'm not even going to try to add milk there's no way it's wonderful like pie crust puff pastry look at the layers on that it's beautiful <laughs> if I'm going for something like that but as a cereal not it so I have another one of these in the oven right now. And then I have a few more here that I need to bake. But I still have all of this in the fridge. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't wanna make any more cinnamon toast crunch cereal. I have no desire. I don't even really want it for a snack. I tried, it didn't work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go ahead and wrap these up and I'm gonna use them as pie crusts because that's essentially what I've made here. Um, all butter pie crusts with cinnamon. And I think I'm going to use these to make pumpkin pies. And I feel really good about that. <laughs> There's no wasted ingredients. Um, this still turned out delicious and really, if, if we're talking pie crust, really great consistency and texture. So this was not a waste. I'm gonna put these in the freezer and I will use these. It's October, so here shortly, next month maybe, I will just use them to make pies. Not a problem. All right, but what I do want, but what I wanna do right now, I want to try the peanut butter Captain Crunch in milk because I think they turned out wonderfully. So I'm just gonna do a little bowl here just to try it. I'm so excited. I have not had cereal in such a long time. All 
All right, let's try it. It tastes exactly like peanut butter Captain Crunch. Are you actually kidding me? I cannot believe that. It tastes the same. Wow. I am blown away right now. I cannot believe this. I've got freshly milled flour in this cereal. This is actually like good for me. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to edit this part to shorten it because I want you to have a realistic idea of time. They're starting to get a little soggy right now. Mm hmm Yep, they're soggy now. Yep, all the crunch is gone at this point. So, those first few bites that I took, they were crunchy, you know, and, and very much like the cereal. At this point, only the ones that were kind of brown still have any crunch. And now at this point, even those are starting to get soggy. So they got soggy pretty quick. However, I've always been the type of cereal eater. I'm one of those weirdos. I pour milk in the bowl and then I keep the box of cereal with me. And I add the cereal as I eat it because I hate, hate, hate soggy cereal. Um, yeah, this is done. I can't even eat it anymore. <laughs> I do not like... I do not like soggy things. <laughs> um, so if you did it that way, if you added it just every couple of bites, added more to the milk, it would be perfect. And that is a sacrifice I would definitely be willing to make if it meant I could have a bowl of cereal without consuming seed oils, dyes, chemicals of any, you know, all that crap. I cannot believe how much that tastes like Captain Crunch. The flavor was so close to the same as the store bought. I literally cannot believe that. Wow. Okay. So this was this was a 50-50. The cinnamon toast crunch absolutely did not work. And I'm sad because I was really I really wanted to surprise Tom with it, but I'm still going to have him try this in the um, peanut butter captain crunch and I still think he's going to be really excited and surprised. Um Yeah, cinnamon toast crunch did not work out. Peanut butter Cinnamon Toast Crunch did not work out. The Peanut Butter Captain Crunch was a total win, total win. And the um, recipe says that it lasts in a Tupperware container for about a week. And that sounds about right because it makes a lot. This recipe makes a lot of it. Um, and I think we would probably end up going through it in about a week. So I'm excited about this. I'm definitely going to keep these um, keep that recipe, the Peanut Butter Captain Crunch recipe in my back pocket. I'll link both of these down in the description. I'm going to keep it in my back pocket because I'm the type of person in this cooking from scratch, whole food, no, no seed oil journey, where if I want something bad enough, I'm not afraid of the work it takes to make it. There have been several times where I've been like, wow, I have a crazy hankering for this thing. And even though I know it's going to take me like an hour and a half, two hours, if it's a bread thing, it could take me all day waiting for rises and whatnot. I don't care. If I want it bad enough, I will put in the work. And it's so empowering to know that you are just a little effort and time away from having something healthy, homemade for you to eat. I love it. I love, love cooking from scratch and baking from scratch. Love it so much. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me today while we tried this experiment. How exciting. I love that together we are continuing to expand the products that we can make ourselves at home in our kitchen. And we are keeping even more dollars out of the pockets of big corporations. And we are empowering ourselves and bringing control back into our own homes and our own kitchens. So I definitely hope you try the peanut butter Captain Crunch recipe. Give it a shot. It was a lot of fun. That'd be a really easy one to include the kids on. Give it a shot. So delicious. 
Thanks so much, guys. I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Have faith and keep moving forward. Bye.